I'm joined by our number one, Laurie Walker. Lo Laurie, lovely to see you. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, we've got the highlights from Tuesday night, obviously. Great evening for yourself. Uh, we're going to go through three key moments in the match. It'd be good to just get your thoughts, thought processes in the moment leading up to it. So this first one is following on from a free kick. Um, and yeah, talk me through it and talk about your, your position. It's just one of them, really. You just have to keep moving with the ball. Um, you know, I keep, keep moving the defenders about as well. Um, you know, repressing the ball really well, damage made great block. And then we just got a set, and like it's a bit of a lucky one as well. But then, you know, biggest thing for making a save like that is you've just got to keep your feet set and, you know, make sure you give yourself the best chance to push off, keep your body weight balanced, and you give yourself the best chance of making the save, really. Absolutely. Right, let's move on to the first penalty. Right, so this is the move leading up to the penalty. Yeah, you know, we're all in defensively good shape, um, you know. Standing it up really well. Dom gets really unlucky here. For me personally, it's not a penalty. Um, I think I don't want to say too much without getting into trouble, but the referee was definitely against us all evening. Um, but you know, these things happen. You come up with, with referees who make bad decisions. They're only human at the end of the day. Um, you know, we don't have the luxury of VAR either. So you know, penalties are penalty, unfortunately, when they give it. Um, I owe a lot to. Kirk for this actually because uh, we looked at all of his penalties before the game he done me a favour as well because it was an absolutely woeful penalty um, standard working players really but um, you know Kirk I owe him a lot because he you know he sent me all the clips before the game um, and we kind of knew where he was going to go in it and that's how it stuck, it stuck really absolutely and if I look <laughs> I looked in the end so two three minutes to go uh, Woken will give him another penalty and here is the beginning of the movement for the Woken second penalty. What were your thoughts on this one? Again, um, I don't know how it's been given, considering you can quite visibly see that the guy has wrestled Danny to the floor. Um, but again, the referee decided to give Woken another penalty, trying to do him a favour because they didn't score the first one. Um, you got your head, hands on your head there, what are you thinking? I was just thinking, <laughs> this is the first time I've ever faced two penalties in one game, and yeah. now I was thinking I don't really know what to do. Do you um, expect that they're going to give it to the same player, or do you reckon No, I was actually change? very surprised that he stood up to take that one again, yeah. to be fair. Um, but I had had a conversation with him probably about five minutes before, telling him that he needs to change his direction where he takes his penalties, because the last three that we've looked at have all gone the same way, and he's a bit <laughs> of an idiot for going the same way. Um, and then actually politely told him that he was going to miss his next one as well, not really realising that it was going to be in the same game. Yeah. Um, so he's standing there. Without giving it away, there's a certain point where I knew where he was going. Um, yeah. And I don't want to sort of divulge it too much, but he did a certain movement that yeah. obviously gave it away where he was going. Um, you know, and you know, it's, it's doing my job. It's the boys out. They've, they've done enough of a job this season getting the goals and, you know, pushing us forward to where we are in the league. And, you know, it's just nice to be able to give something back to them and, you know, come away with something from the game considering I do feel like we were pretty hard done by by the referee. As a keeper, how good does that feel when you save that second penalty? Almost a last minute winner there for Woking. <laughs> do you know what? It didn't Got actually it didn't actually sink in until after the game what just happened. Um because, you know, it's like I say I've never ever in my career faced two penalties in one game. And then to save them both as well, you know, is even it's even more of an achievement yeah. to be fair, considering the odds are against you. Um you know, but it's always a nice feeling to, to get recognised for making two penalty saves in the game. Um, but I'm just more pleased that it got us a point um, and kept us on track to where we want to be, moving into obviously a massive game on Saturday as well. And, you know, like I say, the boys in this game, we all, as a collective, it wasn't just about me, we all collectively dug in and, and got that point secured. Absolutely. Good point on, on Tuesday. The gaffer said he would have taken it, so I'm sure we'll take that and move on. Moving on from Woking, you've had a season which... And the fans are absolutely loving, everyone's talking about it. How are you feeling within yourself? How are you feeling that your season's gone? Obviously, key player within that Barnet side. Very, very good, to be fair. You know, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with how personally my season has gone. Um, being settled, being around a good side makes your job a lot easier because when you're relaxed playing football, um, it makes it just makes your life a lot easier. You know, all everything away from football as well in my personal life is all good, and that always keeps you on, you know, in a good, good state of mind. Got a good support from my family at home, like my, my missus. She's obviously you know, keeps me on track when I'm losing my head at times. Um, but personally, no, it's, it's been a really good season, and, and that, I think a lot of that is down to being relaxed, just walking onto the pitch, and you know, just doing what I'm good at, really. Obviously, shot stopping key for you. But distribution is part of your game that's attracted a lot of praise. 
how important is that for you to practice and to get right? I think all round it's important to not just focus on your strengths you need to pick up on there is that need improvements as well. Um, and obviously Mel at the start of the year was working tirelessly with me. Um, Kirk's obviously stepped in whilst we haven't got anyone in at the moment and has obviously done a fantastic job of asking him a lot of questions. He's done a lot of research for me. And we just, you know, every day we're out there working hard, just putting everything right that we need to, practicing the pieces that, you know, sometimes don't quite, go quite, quite right. Um, but no, it's always good to work on your strengths, but it's also equally important to keep focusing on your all-round game rather than just what you're good at, really. Absolutely. Now, interactions with home and away fans is a key part of you. <laughs> I was in the uh, away end with a couple of the Barnet fans last week at Wealdstone, and yeah, it put a smile on everyone's face. Puts you as a firm fan, fan favourite. How much do you enjoy that part of the game? No, it's, it, it is. It's all funny games, you know. You got you got to have a little bit of a personality and a laugh on the pitch. You know, you stand there getting abused enough off of these fans, so it's always nice to wind them up at the end of it all. You know, you got to be very clever with what you do because games of football can turn very quickly. So there is certain points that you have to start playing these games, but you know, it's, it's all funny games, and it's just it's just my way of really sort of you know getting your own back on the fans who stand there uh, telling you how lovely they are yeah. throughout the game you know um, and it was even more pleasurable to you know wind up the Wildstone fans considering that six points were taken off in this year as well oh and two clean sheets so yeah I forgot about that one I'm surprised we're not going off to Dublin uh, Gateshead FA Trophy semi-final this Saturday huge opportunity for the squad for the club what are your thoughts on it? Um, it's going to be a very, very tough game. Gateshead are a really, really good side um, and should not be taken lightly. I've said this before, you know, their league position means absolutely nothing because for me, technically, they're one of the best football sides in this league and shouldn't be where they are. Um, but I do know if we go and do our job how we can, we will come out of it with a final to look forward to because, you know, we've, we've been consistent all year. You know, we work really, really hard for each other. The boys are constantly working tirelessly on, tirelessly on the pitch. Yeah. Um, you know, and we always work the best we can to to put everything right. If we've not had the best of games, we come in. The gaffer and his team, you know, analyse everything for hours and hours to give us the best chance. You know, we know with the game plan we're going with on Saturday, and if we can execute that game plan, you know, we'll we will definitely come away with a you know a trip to Wembley. But the boys cannot take these lot lightly, which yeah. we won't. Um, you know, and do our jobs, and I think we could be having something to smile about come sort of five o'clock on Saturday. Well, fingers crossed, Laura. I wish you the best for Saturday in the semi-final. Wish you the very best of luck for the rest of the season. Laura Walker, thank you. Thank you.